This episode of We Like Shooting Double Tap is brought to you by Second Call Defense, Swamp Box Optics, Black Rhino Concealment, Rubber Dummies, and Patriot Patch Company. Thank you, Sean Heron Krieger. Say it again. <laughs> Welcome to We Like Shooting Double Tap, episode 139, where we answer your questions, ask a few of our own, and touch base on gun industry news. Our panel tonight is the machine gun Moses, Aaron Krieger. We got Nick, do you have flu like symptoms? No. We have the perfectly healthy non carrier of the coronavirus, Nick Lynch. I don't my, know about perfectly healthy. <laughs> my I name, bet he does have the coronavirus. My name is Sean Heron. And <laughs> nope. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, I turned it down and then turned it back up. I don't know what's happening. Aaron, what's up, man? Nothing. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Nick, you're good? Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Good enough. And if you had a percentage level of Nick, what would the percentage level be, Nick? Let's just assume it's a one to four scale. Uh, let's, let's just a one say to four. A one to four. Like 10 is out of the question. Five, probably not that much, but a one to four. Uh, on a scale of one to four, how good are you? Like 2.5. <laughs> a- acceptable. Yeah. Good uh, enough. It's a scale of one to 10, but your max is four. That, oh, that's I what see. I'm trying to say. Oh, 2.5. <laughs> <laughs> so someone. And send us bread in a can. Uh, it is New England's finest B and M Burnham and Morrill brown bread raisin. B M. Yeah, B M. B M. I actually don't have a can opener in the studio, so I just used a knife. So it's ridiculously sharp. Uh, first person to bleed in it has to eat the other guy's blood. I'm gonna eat it right out of the can. I am too. So I figured Nick and I could do. If you pop a hole in the bottom, it'll it'll come out easier. <laughs> it's just like just like you in the closet. I was like, is that what you tell Nick? It smells like somebody took a bowl of raisin bran and then poured molasses, molasses over the top of it. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it probably comes out. All right, I'm just going to cut it. Okay, and then we'll just pop some out on this not clean at all paper. There you go, Nick. I'm going to eat this section. You eat whatever you'd like. All right, ready? On a count of three, we're eating canned bread. Okay. Canned bread. Here we go. Nobody counted. Oh, three. <laughs> but we both ate. <laughs> We're rebels. It tastes like bread. Yeah, it tastes like uh, raisin bran. Yeah. With some mo- extra molasses. Lots of molasses. It's, it's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I don't hate this at all. Yeah. I don't want to eat a lot of it. Uh, Me either. Like, maybe one more little piece, but uh, mm-hmm. not bad. Or would you put, what, would you like, butter that bread, or would you just eat no, it plain? No, I would eat this with, like, a glass of milk. Justin over in the chat said, you guys just talked 10 minutes ago. Don't act like you care how they feel now. <laughs> it's true. But we were A lot forward. has happened. Yeah. These shows will come out days apart. Now, Lots of things happened in between that time that you don't see us. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> You'd be surprised. I'm trying to chew this bread so fast. I'm sorry. Uh, first company I want to talk about tonight, Second Call Defense. You know them. You love them. Self-Defense Insurance. Like, seriously, if you carry a gun and you have to use it in self-defense, like, what happens? Do you know the entire process? I do. You do? What is it? Not, now I do. Tell me. We dial 911, and then the second thing I do is dial second call defense. Okay, that's, I mean, like, what ha- Like, if you don't have a second call defense, what happens? Oh, then you bury the body in the backyard and hope no one ever discovers it. What is it that uh, Jeremy always says? Shoot, shovel, and shut up? <laughs> that's fair. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to go to prison for the rest of your life, uh, you can check out Second Call Defense. It's literally like 10 bucks all the way up to 40 bucks a month, just depending on what program you want. But if you have a gun and you have a family, if you have people that you care about, people that care about you, and you don't have this kind of insurance just in case, what else does Jeremy say? You're stupid and you make bad decisions. Yeah, he does say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we like shooting.com slash SCD. That's the place that you can go. Is is the bread dry or moist? It's moist. Uh, it is. Yeah, it's dry. It's moist dry. Yeah, like my mouth feels dry afterwards, but like when you're actually eating it, it's got a, a unacceptable amount of moisture. Nick, is I it ch- so dense? moist. It is dense. It is very dense. Nick, I challenge us to eat this whole loaf of oh, canned bread. No, please. Do you understand what would happen to me? No, but let's find like, out. I'm, I'm already pushing it, having those like two bites. If I ate that much bran, I would die. Oh, f- <laughs> okay. Good point. Good point. 
I, I want the gravestone, uh, my gravestone to have the image from Oregon Trail. Just you have died of dysentery. <laughs> I want mine to say you have died of being too f***ing bro. Yeah, because you're <laughs> are so long. <laughs> this is would you rather. You and turned around quickly and they slapped onto to the windshield of a passing semi truck, sort of like one of those sticky hands that you get out of a vending machine and it just yanked you down the road, but it made it like a quarter mile before it yanked you because your scrotum's so long. And then it dragged you behind it uh, for like another 20 miles before you noticed and that's how you died because you were too bally. All I want is a Viking funeral and you can leave my on the shore and just use them to pull me back once you burn me. We've got to do it in the ocean and we'll, we'll kick your over the side to use them as an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> this is Would You Rather where Aaron presents us with a question and a funny story is I did a bunch of research for Would You Rather before the show and I just looked and it's two totally different things. Aaron, what do you have for us? Where, where's yeah, the Mariana's yeah, I was trench? going with uh, a different, couple different fixed blade knives uh, but that? I decided to change it up mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. we had our last show because okay. uh, like no, would you guys rather have a, a Tech 9 or an MP5? MP5. Or the Tech Nine? M- no, MP5. Or the Tech Nine? Which one, Sean? MP5. Or the Tech Nine? Pick one. MP5. Or Nick? MP5. Aaron, what would you pick? Tech Nine. Would you really? Why? Because they're awesome. They're really not. They are awesome. They're kind of shitty. Actually. I mean, they're kind of awesome because of the uh, like whole story Culture. around them and the. The history and the AWB, and because they look kind of neat, but they really are shitty. like they are not a high quality firearm. No, they're shitty. they're awesome. Did you know that they they thought that militaries were going to buy those things? Did they, they were really? like, we're going to build these. A bunch of armies are going to use them. Yeah. So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, George Kelgren from Caltech designed those, correct? Uh, I don't know. Did he I really? It was a um, yeah, George Kelly. Oh, Interatech, yeah. Intratech, yeah. So the guy who owns Caltech these days is actually the dude who created the Tech Nine. Oh, that guy's amazing. You picked one that I liked. I mean, seriously, the the gun looks awesome. No, it it looks awesome. Tell me the Tech Nine doesn't look awesome, dude. I would rather have a micro Uzi, uh, an Uzi. I would rather have an MP5. Like, if someone, I would never buy a Tech Nine. You know, that's not true. I want kind of everything right now, but I, I can, you having, just, um, can you imagine having a full auto tech nine? That'd yeah. be so badass. Okay. That would be okay. But they're, Brrr, you know, they're kind of two handed, just going to town on whatever you need to go to town on. What would you Cakes. guys, what would you guys listening? If you Google tech nine, a really looking rapper pops up. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> no, it's not tech nine. It's T E C. There's yeah. no H on the end. Tech dash nine. He said, oh, wait, that's tech in 9 any. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to keep eating this bread while Aaron talks about how great Tech 9 is. You're, you're going to wake up at like Why, why do they say like, I'm going to end up with the beatus? I'm not eating anything and over you're here. you're going to so much. Yeah, what the f***? Why, why is Aaron getting f***ed at for eating when I'm sitting here eating a whole f***ing loaf of canned bread? Right. And this is this is Coke Zero. So so it's not like this. I'm, like, I'm not eating any sugar. And I've got water. What's Cardinal. Uh, it's a mortgage company. Oh, well, that's boring. Mm-hmm. You know what the first thing I do uh, when I get water bottles that have company logos on them is put stickers on them. Yes, but remember when Jeremy brought us whiskey that one night when we were out? No. Yeah, remember when we were like, "Oh, we need whiskey," and he came in and sat right next to you. Oh, I thought you were talking about Jeremy, uh, our Jeremy. Oh no, we don't I was like, "What him. the?" F-? Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, that's yeah. his company. Right on. Oh. I guess that's. Okay, then you can leave it uncovered. Oh, I thanks, suppose. thanks, Nick. Yeah. So, you're so welcome. Uh, Johnny Burundi, or Burunda in, our, in the chat really doesn't like uh, mages. It says mags. Oh, all right, never mind. Then it's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is uh, where we will talk about Swamp Fox Optics. Nick, take it away. Swamp Fox Optics. Well, they are not made from foxes, and they are not made in a swamp. Mm. Yeah. Uh, swamp. They're not fox. even made from swamp fox eyes. That's true. I was a little bit disappointed. I'll be say. Uh, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll be say. Uh, cool. Yeah, they uh, they make some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. They have started with some entry level, like uh, budget friendly stuff, and they're really stepping it up. They're they're getting more and more. Uh, uh, 
what what was high end Gucci uh, high end. There we go. the The quality is increasing quite a bit. Um, they aren't into the uh, several thousands of dollar quality territory with like some of the some of the big dogs, but for most of us, they make really good optics at a really decent price. Uh, that'll that'll do pretty much whatever we need to at this point. Um, it, it, all of the complaints that I have had and that I've seen people have, uh, it seems like they're addressing. So, yeah. like every time an issue comes out, the next one is better and and has done something. Um, there was uh, oh, the Kingslayer. Uh, some people complained about um, after some drop testing, it it breaking. So the next generation of little micro red dots like that is going to be available with a additional shield that'll go over the top of it. They they did make it stronger. They made the battery life better. Uh, they made a bunch of improvements like that. But just in case, in case you want to smash the out of yours, um, they have like a little steel hoop. It's Was it steel or aluminum? Uh, it is steel. Uh, yeah, a little steel hoop that goes over it that'll connect to your, uh, your mount and give you some extra strength there. It's an exoskeleton. So, I mean, they're... They're doing a good job of uh, of listening to what people are saying. I feel like they're listening to feedback. That was a f-ing great ad read. Swampfoxoptics.com. Coupon code WLS is life. Saves you 25% off your entire look, order. Look, Johnny Burundi is now like the Ford Magi I don't like on pistols. It's it a, like magicians it, it in says, front of the pistols. It says mag. It says magi. It says mag. M-A-G-I. No, it says literally M-A-G. What's the next letter? Space I. I Right, the Magi. Burn when you pee? Unsure about your relationship? go back to first grade. Why can't you use 45 in a 9mm? Get your questions answered on hashtag DearWLS. Visit BeLikeShooting.com slash DearWLS to submit your questions. All right, this is where we answer the questions on the show. Uh, Nick, take the first one. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. It's my favorite one by far ever written. <laughs> it's pretty f- of, of uh, questions. Johnny Utah. Shouldn't he be uh, jumping he, out of a plane? Yeah, or like surfing, surfing or something. Yeah. Um, just so you guys know, I'm not just playing on my phone. I'm not pulling a Jeremy. I'm looking at the chat on my phone because oh. it wouldn't load for some reason. Oh, weird. Uh, so Johnny Utah says, "Hi guys. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. I'm wondering if you have a good recommendation for Glock 43 base plates. I have recently got a couple Terran Tactical ones I really like, but." Ever since I installed them, they won't quit asking my pistols to see the precious. <laughs> uh, and they begged, begged to be inserted into the pistol. It also asked if it liked to be, <laughs> It also asked if it liked to use bigger G17 mags, specifically the OEM black ones, not the old uh, OD green or coyote color, but black. Uh, I find it really odd, maybe because of the small six round mags the TTI base plate is attached to is just feeling inadequate. But for real though, the video is absolutely creepy. Do you recommend, uh, have any recommendations for a new base plate? I'm not one to boycott or whatever, but I don't think I can look at the logo pressed against my wholesome Neo mag without throwing up. Thanks, Johnny Utah. Can you hand me that uh, gun right there? Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. <clears throat> this one, I busted out of the safe earlier and it just jumped right in there and made me show at the edge of the precious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the brown hills Terran tactical yeah. ones. I actually like it. I think it's I mean, perfectly functional. I don't give a f- at this point, like you've got the thing you've already supported the dude, uh, getting rid of it. Isn't going to change anything. Um, just use it. Like it, yeah. it is, it is a high quality product. It's a good product. Like maybe don't buy any more if you're yeah. offended by the guy and don't want to support him. Cool. But like to go out and get rid of a perfectly functional, if you're really bothered by the logo, like scratch it off, put a piece of tape over it, uh, paint it. This gun is f-ing baller, by the way. It is pretty baller. Yeah. Um, so what are some good Glock uh, mag extensions? Darren Tactical makes some good ones. Uh, I don't <laughs> think he's after extensions, though. He just says base plate, and he mentions that it's still six rounds. Oh, oh okay. So just those little so just the I guess. metal or aluminum base plate. Does Falcor make any for the 43? Uh, so these were Falcor, actually, but I don't think they make these. These were the vo- Velocity. I don't think they make those anymore. Oh, this is a pretty cool gun, too, by the way. Okay. What is it? It is a Smith & Wesson MMP with a Faxon Patriot MMP slide, a Faxon TIN barrel, a Atlas Defense Pylum 9mm suppressor, a Vortex Viper optic, and the Falkor 
mag extensions, and an Apex tactical trigger. It's Sweet. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know who makes just base plates. Like, literally, just... I actually don't either, because I've never... Uh, I've never really bothered. Like I just use the factory ones, the factory ones. Yeah. You know, I got some base plates in and I can't remember from who they're on my Glocks. I need, um, but it, it was, it, it just moved it up like three rounds. That was about it. Uh, is it one of the Pierce ones? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah. But but he's not talking about extensions. He's just talking about base plates. Yeah, base plates. Like, I mean, you don't have to, they're not that expensive and it gives you, a decent extension. So, I mean, if you're looking for something to get a better grip on, I genuinely don't know. I've, yeah. I mean, it, it works. Yeah. Sorry. You have to spend a couple extra cents to fill the whole thing up, but it'll work for you, buddy. All right, cool. Alexander, the grape says, do you see backup irons being a necessity on your rifle of choice for the next trimmers movie? I have an LK one, one, uh, 1.5 to six on my AR, but the eye relief doesn't leave room for a rear sight. I know the optic is practically bomb proof, but without iron, Elkan, that's awesome. But without irons, I'm worried my vast armies of fruits and vegetables will mutiny on me at the critical moment when we're about to conquer the known refrigerator. P.S. What are your favorite grapes? Uh, grapes that have been squished, put in a barrel, and Fermented? then put into a bottle. Yep. Uh, I like Concord grapes. Um, I like green grapes. I just don't want seeds in my grapes. No. Annoys me. Yeah, you put seeds in the grapes. F- you. Yeah, nature. Exactly. <laughs> it's like people are out there sticking seeds in the grapes, Sean. Do offset, come that way. Do offset 45s if you are if you really want iron sights. Yeah. Uh, uh, flip up. Duck flip up will work too, man. If uh, you're worried about the height issue. Well, you can't flip them up because the optic sits over them. Well, so, not, not just that, but he's saying he has to have it so far back that there's no room behind the, uh, on the, rail. the optic. And, I mean, you could put one in front of it. You totally could. If there's room. Uh, but then, you know, your aperture would have to be relatively large. <clears throat> the answer is 45 degree offsets. Duke Defense. Yeah, they're like two hundred and sixty bucks, something like that. Or even if there's not even room to mount those, uh, there's the excess big dot, right? Mm-hmm. Which I mean, you're not going to make any like awesome long range shots with, but uh, those are you, pretty cool. Yeah. You can put the rear one in front of your uh, optic, um, and you know if you need it at close range or whatever, it's there. Yeah, Aaron. Next question. Uh, the next question question is from Nick T. I have a P80 frame, but need some guidance on where, where to start collecting parts. My understanding is I need to use Gen 3 parts. Is this correct? Absolutely. And yes. Yes. You will need Gen 3 parts. All right. So here's the cool thing. Uh, Polymer 80 genuinely uh, usually has parts out there. I'm going there right now just to see. Yeah. So you're going to u- use Gen 3 parts. Yes. They have a frame parts kit with complete trigger assembly for 50 bucks. They have a... Uh, P eighty nine millimeter Gen three, uh, no trigger for thirty five bucks. They've got those parts. I think they have slide parts out there as well. And if not, Brownells, uh, Brownells is where I've literally ordered every single part ever for all the polymer eighties that I've put together. Um, so if you do polymer eighty, the coupon code is going to be WLS's life and Brownells. Just go to wheelaxshooting dot com slash sponsors and click on Brownells. But yeah, Gen three, and you can buy them at those places, and they're available through a lot of different places. But that's where I get mine. Uh, Nick. Yes. Next question. Uh, uh, By Gilligan. Uh, Gilligan Ice says, uh, how <laughs> does one purchase a firearm from the machine gun Moses, a Michigander here? He's a female goose. She is a female goose. Actually, uh, Michiganders is how we, uh, what Michi- people from Michigan are called. Yeah. Like we call ourselves Colorado Ganders? No, we don't because we're not female uh, geese. Exactly. Uh, all right. And, and they also call people from North Michigan youpers. That explains why Aaron's always running around going, honk, honk, honk. <laughs> well, it, 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 that's if you're a Michigander. If you're a youper, you go, yep. Uh, that was so loud. That oh, was really loud. Oh, so sorry. You didn't everybody. need to do that. So, yeah, youpers are because they're from the Upper Peninsula, the UP of Michigan. So we call them youpers. Anyway, Aaron, how do people buy a gun from you? Uh, you email me and tell me what you want, and I will give you a price. Uh, That's what, pretty... what, where, the, where should they email at you? Uh, you can easily email me at Aaron at we like shooting.com. And you, the name of your FFL is? Gray Wolf Firearms. There you go. There it is. Jeff said Gander is a male goose, not a female. That's good for the goose. It's good for the Gander. Yep. 
Gander Mountain. I have been so wrong this whole time. Your whole life. Wait, yeah. then what is a female goose? <clears throat> a, a goose. goose. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. A male goose is a gander. You know what they call uh, a lot of crows? A murder. A murder. F- you. Do you know what they no, call? They do, do not they call, call it a f- you. A they male? call it a murder. Do you know what they call a, uh, a female peacock? Uh, a peahen. That's right. It's what I see you eating under there. And they're not. Uh, they're not very what? colorful. No, they don't have the. They don't have the plumage. No. Jono says, I'm very close to buying Rocket FFL and taking the plunge, but I have a question first. Your SOT lasts from July 1st, July 1st to June 30th, 500 bucks a year, but you don't have to wait forever for your suppressor and no tax stamp. Consider it a convenience fee. Awesome. What I'm wondering is, let's say I get my SOT on July 5th and buy two suppressors the following week for myself. Cool, I have suppressors. I don't need a tax stamp carried around. I'm assuming you just have to have proof of SOT, but what happens if you don't renew your SOT the next year? Are you grandfathered in to having your suppressors or do you not have to get a tax stamp at that point? Or return them to the manufacturer or jail. Thanks, guys. Join the cult. It's more of a rapey family than a creepy religious group. So first of all, we got our FFLs and I got the SOT because we intend to be in the business of selling firearms, right? We, we like through We Like Shooting, we have a lot of exposure uh, and a lot, a lot of exposure to new things. And we are doing it with the intent to do it as a business and sell firearms. If you are purely getting an FFL and an SOT because you want to air quote, bypass the system, don't f-ing do it. Like it's like, you're going to end up f-ing yourself over. Um, but if you want to be in the business, if you would like to be a firearms dealer, then I think you should definitely do it. But do when it. you phrase stuff like this, I worry that you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And that, that's definitely in my opinion, a problem and probably the opinion of the federal government as well. Now, I think we talked about this already, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but uh, I think you have to you either have to transfer it depending on how you set up your business, and that's why we use Rocket FFL because it answers these kind of questions. But based on how you set up your business is what you have to do. Like for me, the SOT is held by uh, the SOT is held by my LLC. He said, yeah, skip it. Did we already do it? I'm confused now. And if I was, if my LLC were to go out of business, then I would have to either do the form, what is it, form one? Oh, no, form four. Yeah. Uh, to myself or transfer them to another SOT or something like that. Um, but yeah, just like I worry uh, some of the questions we've been getting, like I worry that people are trying to do it because they think it's bypassing stuff. Like we are doing it. And not only that, but when we use suppressors and things and have them uh, out of the range, we are doing marketing and testing uh, for our FFLs and our SOTs. Yeah. So, yeah, someone did ask a similar question, but I just wanted to revisit anyway. Uh, Nick, next question. Or wait, Aaron, it's your turn. It is my turn. But I was going to interject that one. Okay. Question for the whole team. I heard Jeremy discuss about rebarreling a 458 SOCOM, the 450 Bushmaster in Ohio, because of the straight, straight case wall hunting laws and wanted to expand on the thumper caliber. My question, if needed a straight case wall law, if if needing a straight case wall laws did not matter and you had to choose between building a 450 Bushmaster and 458 SOCOM, which would you pick taking into consideration ballistics, putting on a can, magazine differences, reloading ammunition, flexibility and ammo, etc.? Uh, let's see. I think Jeremy picked 450. Yeah, he did. Um I like 458 actually, and I don't think that it's ballistically better or anything. I just like the round. I think it's fun. It shoots fire. Um, so out of those two, I I don't know. I've got one of each. I like them both ballistically. They're pretty similar. Uh, but he says putting on a can. I use the same can for both calibers. The verse 458 from Bowers Group. Uh, ballistics are reasonably similar, right, Nick? Yeah. Uh, magazine differences. I use the same magazines. Uh, reloading ammunition, I have not done, so I cannot speak on. And then flexibility and ammo. They're both going to be about the same there, too. Yeah, same cost. I uh, I went with 458 SOCOM, and if I was going to pick again, I probably would. And it's kind of for some of the same reasons that Sean said. Like, I, To me, they're pretty close, and the 458 SOCOM, just for whatever reason, is a little more satisfying to shoot. Um, it's probably in my head. I don't know. But for whatever reason, I, I like it a little more. Uh, I'm not crazy about the whole, you know, Bushmaster thing. So yeah. I don't, uh, don't do much with that. And, uh, 
as far as ammo availability goes, like for, for me, from what I've seen in our area, uh, walking into a store, I, I usually see equal options, if not maybe a little more for 458 SOCOM. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, like, I like the 458 as well. Do you? So, yeah, I just, it's always been a caliber I liked. I, the 450 Bushmaster, I, I've shot just once. I, dude, I love the round. I mean, it's incredibly huge. It's impressive looking. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice looking round, but, um, you know, to me, the, uh, 458 was just something that resonates. Just maybe it's the name or the history behind it, but I just like it. But let's get real here. 450 Bushmaster isn't in Call of Duty. Exactly. That's true. But what was best up is you have 10 better. rounds in Call of Duty. In yeah, because 10 rounds of 458 SOCOM fit in a 30-round uh, 5.56 mag. Yeah, and what bothers me about Call of Duty, as much as I love the game as often as I play it, is the fact that uh, you can only put five things on your gun. Yeah. Like, I can have, you can either have a extended magazine or a uh, or, or a buzz stock. I'm like, why can't I have both? Yeah. Por qué no? In the military, oh, dude. I've uh, I, I've seen a lot of guns that have way more than six <laughs> accessories on them. But uh-huh. uh, my personal favorite was uh, this old guy came in to the shop where I was working. And uh, I can't remember what it was that he wanted done, but he wanted some basic thing done. Like, he wanted me to clean his rifle for him or something. And I was like, yeah, sure. And he opens up the case. And he's like, you know, I just have uh, have the basics on it. I, I I'm not one of those people who uh, likes to have everything on their rifle. I just, you know, have some basic necessities. And then he goes through and lists everything. He had like a light, a laser, and it's all like the shitty wish stuff. Yeah, uh, light laser, bipod, foregrip. Uh, I think he did have like a couple of big mags in the um in the case. Are you taking a <laughs> selfie, Sean? He is for our Instagram um, story. And then he had like a um, like a scope and an offset red dot, and yeah, I was like, dude, I don't think there's anything else you can put on this. Like, I, <laughs> did he just have a flashlight? Just, uh, yeah, flashlight and laser, and bipod and foregrip. I was like, what? What else could you possibly want or need? You know what he like, needs I, is a uh, t- tape measure. <laughs> yeah, I have a tactical tape measure. I couldn't afford a rangefinder. Oh, <laughs> shit. oh. I- Whatever I'm shooting at to hold it while I pull the trigger. So let's get some tape measures, <laughs> glue some little Picatinny clamps on the side of them, and say that they're rail mounted range finders. <laughs> but they only work up to 12 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Budget minded. Nah, we can get some like 30 foot ones. <laughs> All right. I hope that helped. Aaron, this one's yours. Nope. Nick, this one's yours. From Matt C. Uh, yeah. Matt C. Uh, I know JCAA hasn't been a sponsor of the show in a long time, but has the company gone belly up? I went to their website, and they don't have any products available, and their social media accounts have been deactivated. This website feels like a ghost town. Thanks in advance. Hashtag WLS is life. Hashtag SSB. Hashtag Brownells, uh, Brownells Brown Holes. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, JCAA does not exist anymore. Which sucks because, man, and I, I see a lot of people posting recently about, oh, man, I'm running out of JCAA finally. Yeah. And, like, we've got some, but I don't – I only shoot that, like, when I absolutely need quality. It's it's literally the best ammo that we ever used. Yeah, it it was very good, very consistent. Um, <clears throat> I do I, yeah. still talk to Chris often. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's a, he's a good dude. Yep. Miss him. Shotgun Her says, thank you for taking the time to uh, – I just saw Nick, like – jerk something really hard on my gun and i was like the f- bro <laughs> that was anyway, i know not the gun but yeah. anyway the, the surprise i just saw it peripherally i didn't uh i didn't jerk anything on the gun <laughs> he was jerking the round cylindrical thing on the gun at least not sean's gun shotgun her says thank you for taking the time to answer my question on lpvos uh if i may i have a follow-up question first to address the points jeremy brought up after my eye surgery red dots are not dots for me they are streaked out starbursts front sight posts are doubled and my aim point is not simply the middle Therefore, one X optic would be fine for hitting birds in flight or rabbits on the run. However, I'd like something with some magnification on it, as I can see a deer at 80 yards, but maybe not the sapling at 60 yards in front of it. I figured an LPVO would allow for fast target acquisition when needed and be able to shoot through the brush easier and more accurately. At the recommendation of the guys on the Gun and Gear podcast, what's up? I've purchased the Attaball Striker 1 to 4 by 24. Do you agree, <laughs> agree with this recommendation to <laughs> mount it on the VR80? Jeez, I'm all right. I'm hoping to purchase when my budget allows. Uh, I have zero experience with, uh, Adderall. Yeah, I, 
I don't really like know we actually know Jimmy and talk to him uh, at every show that we see him at, but I've never used an edible optic. So I don't know. I, I could I genuinely have never even looked through one or maybe I've looked through one at a booth, but I've never used one, had it on a gun or anything like that. Yeah, same. Sorry. Um, and I don't know. Zane's on the gun and gear podcast and he's such a fud. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, oh, next, uh, Aaron, Aiden ask, ask, <laughs> what? Aiden ask, Aiden S asks. That's where I got messed up there. God damn it. <laughs> what is a law letter? I think I know, but I'm not exactly sure. Why can someone, why can some post 86 machine guns be sold to someone with the appropriate license without one? So here's the deal. Uh, Pre-86 machine guns, uh, you didn't, weren't required to have law letters because you can make machine guns back then. Then the law came out and says you can't make any more machine guns. So a law letter states that I'm a law enforcement agency and I'm looking into purchasing some fully automatic machine guns. Here's a letter to an FFL SOT uh, manufacturer. Then they can make a machine gun for me to sample and then once I'm done sampling it, I give it back to the guy who, who made it, unless I purchase it. That's what the law letter is for. Did that make sense, guys? Kind uh, of. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to give it back. Uh, the, the idea is you get a letter from law enforcement saying they're interested in potentially buying this firearm. Uh, then you go to someone with that letter. Uh, you buy the firearm. The law enforcement agency tests it, decides if they want to buy it or not. If they don't, then you have it. If they want to buy it, then you can go buy more or whatever. Um, yeah. So basically, they outlawed the manufacture of machine guns for civilian use, anything after 86. So correct. civilians can't buy any machine guns unless were they were made yeah. before 1986. And the problem is, is that we have limited – there's a, a much higher demand than supply because it's a finite resource because they don't make them anymore. So because of that, they're 20 – anywhere between like – I don't know. You can get some for four grand. You could probably get a Tech 9 for – six grand i i really don't know how much i've been looking at a lot of no law letter uh yeah but he's he's specifically asking about uh post 86 stuff not pre-86 yeah and, so the deal with that and is law letter versus no law letter yeah so you have to have the chief of police or sheriff or whatever it happens to be or any law enforcement agency give you a letter of intent saying that they would like to possibly per- exactly exactly what nick said Basically, if you are an SOT, you can buy a pre-86 machine gun without a law letter. Correct. If you are an SOT, you can buy a post-86 machine gun, but you have to have a law letter, which is the, the demo letter. Correct. And then if you're a manufacturing FFL holding a Class 2 or uh, and a Class 2 SOT, uh, then you may manufacture machine guns. And they belong to the uh, uh, SOT, the Special Occupational Taxpayer. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, I don't care. What do you guys... Next one? Whoever wants it. NYS Freedom Fighter says, What do you guys think of this new ammo squared.com? I'm building a 308 AR-10, and I'm wondering if this might be a good way to start buying ammo and uh, then exchange it for whatever I want. Find it shoots well. Or uh, whatever I... Oh, gee. What? Uh, hey, uh, and then exchange it for probably. whatever I, I later find shoots well. Ammo as currency sounds like a good idea. Heath M says he can cook you up with uh, his fourth grade speech teacher information if you need help. He said that to you. Three. Yeah, but he's having issues as well, so I oh. figured I would share the information. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think I've heard of Ammo Squared. It's like a subscription box service or something, right? You like pay. I actually... Uh, have not heard of it. Yeah, you pick a caliber, set your budget, and then accumulate. But I think it accumulates there, and you have to specifically be like, okay, now send me my ammo and then pay shipping for it, as I understand it. And then, so you build a little bit at a time. It's kind of, it's a, it's a ammunition savings account. I don't know. Huh. So, so I say I want to, uh, I want 10 bucks of ammo a month. Yes. They, every month they take 10 bucks from my bank account and set 10 bucks worth of ammo aside. And then at the end of the year, when I have $120 worth of ammo, I can say, Hey, I want all my ammo now and they'll ship it to me. Yeah. This yeah. Is, is this not exactly the definition of a Ponzi scheme? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know how crazy I am about this. You know what I used to do 
is uh, I would drive by a gun shop every day on my way home from work. So every payday, I would stop and buy a couple boxes of ammo and throw them in the back of my truck under the seat. And then when I had like a decent stack of them, you know, every couple weeks, I would go uh, go shoot. Yeah, I the I mean, I'm not saying that these guys are good people or bad people. I'm just saying this is exactly how a Ponzi scheme scheme works. Scream. If they are taking ammunition out of their stock and setting it in a box that specifically says Nick Lynch on it, and then when you order it, they go to grab your box, but I can guarantee that's not what they do. If everyone wanted to make a run on their ammo at the exact same time, I think that this is the exact kind of thing that, uh, that I mean, could it's, easily It's crash. like a bank if everybody showed up at the bank today and wanted all their money out, you know? Yeah, uh, Exactly. But yeah, I I don't think I would do this. Um, I it's so easy to get ammo. Like it's not a huge inconvenience. I would much rather just take that ten bucks or whatever and go buy that <laughs> ammo every month. Roten said it's called a bank account. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Uh, I I I yeah. Like well, like you said earlier, it's a savings account for ammo. Yeah. Um, I this doesn't. And then, sound you convenient. know what the worst part is? Like, say it does hit the fan and you need that ammo, they're not going to yeah. send it to you. Or no. Or you spontaneously like find out you have Saturday afternoon free and you want to go sh- uh, shooting too bad because it's going to take three days to ship the ammo to you or four days or whatever. So. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's cool. Like, the idea is interesting. I just, uh, oh, cool, blazer brass. Uh, so, wait, wait. I choose a, a caliber, 9mm. I choose a use. Oh, uh, you can choose either practice or self defense. Uh, $5 will add 7.6 rounds to your inventory each month. Of what is that Winchester? Uh, Winchester Ranger. Ranger. That's for self defense, and the practice, the service grade is American Eagle. It looks like. So it's twenty cents around <laughs> for the American Eagle there. Mm-hmm. Plus shipping, a little bit pricey. Yeah, that does seem pricey. I don't know. Like it's an interesting idea. I don't want to shit on it too much, but the, this is not a thing that I would do. Me neither. Okay. I I don't see the point here really. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we're wrong. Tell us tell us how we're wrong on social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, like I said, interesting idea. Not something I would do. I'll tell you what, guys. You give me five dollars a month, and I'll buy ammo and send it to you when you need it. That's a great idea, Aaron. <laughs> you. And then when you need it, I'm going to charge you fifty dollars for shipping. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see, Nick. I am not familiar with the process for destructive devices. Are you? Uh, I I mean, I think it's the same as a uh, suppressor or SBR or NFA item, isn't it? You file a Form 4 or a Form 1 if you're making it. I think you actually need a destructive device license, don't you? It's a separate license. Well, yeah, you need like a different kind of FFL, I believe. Well, to to sell it or deal it, is that what he's asking or is he asking... Okay, Roden M says, can you guys go over the, and don't highlight this one yet, because I think maybe we'll ask Jeremy if we don't know. Uh, it says, can you guys go over the process an individual or a manufacturer has to go through obtaining destructive devices? Do they fall into the same category as machine guns? Can an individual own a 40 millimeter grenade or grenade launcher? Is it true each grenade has to have its own paperwork? Are there transferable grenades? Does one need an additional explosive license? Thanks. I don't know the answer. Okay, to so I know from the consumer end, I know the, the uh, answers to some of this. So, um, Yes, you can buy a like a M203. The funny thing about the M203 is that you can actually buy the uh like the frame portion that mounts to the gun and has the trigger on it. Uh that part is not a destructive device, so you can actually buy that like right now and have it shipped to your house. Uh but the barrel portion is the destructive device and that requires a $200 tax stamp and you go through all the same stuff that you would with an uh NFA item. Uh as far as the grenades go, you can get like the practice rounds and stuff, Chalk um, marker rounds. Yeah, and those those are fine. Um I, I mean, believe technically, so the yeah. um the, once it's 40 millimeters, then it yeah. becomes a destructive device or exp- you know, then, yep. then you need, but if you have 37 millimeters, it's Correct. okay. Correct. Yeah. Then it's a flare launcher. Um, yes. so, uh, but, but we're talking about destructive devices and stuff here. Um, if you get actual grenades, yes, you have to have a, uh, tax stamp for each grenade. So you, it's $200 plus the cost of the grenade for each one. Um, and then you have all of the, uh, the restrictions that you have with like a, a NFA item, you know, if you take it over state lines or whatever, I believe you have to notify the ATF. Um, yeah, I, I would assume you would have to notify them when you destroyed it, when you shot it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's, 
Yeah, it's kind of a pain. That's why you don't see a whole lot of that stuff. But I mean, it is out there. It is available, and you can get it. Um, Sven uh, has a, a two hundred three um, that he let us shoot some uh, some chalk some out of chalk. Yeah, but yeah. Well, hopefully that answered. If not, let us know, and we'll uh, see if Jeremy knows anything else there. Um, I don't know. One more. Whoever wants it. Okay. Chris W says, so in regards to the cuck, who, Aaron? Uh, I don't know. Oh, who got everyone all riled up on Twitter. I would think that that should be used as a valuable lesson of why we should be forming our own militias, even if they have a bad connotation to the name. Because if we formed our own militias, we would have a group of people that knew we were reputable and could be trusted when we called them and said that stuff was going down. Even further, our little militias could be in contact with other groups of people who know we're reputable and trustworthy the way it <clears throat> that way, when it's time to kick off or at least stand up for our rights, we know who, who we can stand for and who we can trust as well as know what we're going to do. What do you guys think? I don't know, man. I kind of feel like the less people, well, <laughs> I was going to say the less people that know what I can do and what I have, the better. As That's I, a legitimate statement there. As I say that on the Biggest Gun podcast that there is. But at the same time, you know, the problem with militias is a lot of times – uh, it's the reaction time that you're expecting. You know, sometimes people react too quickly and get riled up over something they shouldn't, and that could cause an issue with, with a militia. You know how people get caught? They talk about it? They talk about it. You know, I, there's so many Benedict Arnolds in the universe that, like, I, like, we keep our, our personal circles pretty small. Um, We... Nick and I, we've been burned and it sucked and it could have affected a lot of people's lives. And I think that, so when you ask me to join a group, like I kind of don't want to, I don't want to join a group. I don't want, I don't know. Nick, what are your thoughts here? I'm, I, I'm kind of torn by this one too. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in theory, like the idea of at the very least having a group of people who will vouch for you. Um, if something bad happens, however, at the same time, like you said, like people, people talk and say dumb and things and you end up with one person in the group who, uh, is and runs their mouth and then everybody looks like, and no one is credible. Uh, you have to, I, I mean, I'm sure that any of those groups that are, uh, larger or well-known or even maybe not well-known, um, are going to have people from the outside keeping an eye on them um or maybe uh god not to sound like super all paranoid and stuff but but infiltrating um that's a a pretty common pretty regular thing that we all know about and knows what and we, we know that it happens even if it's like a a temporary thing and they don't find anything it is pretty common for uh people like the fbi to send somebody into a, a group that they want to know more about and you know they go check it out, join, see what's going on. And if it's not an issue, then they leave, but, but they're still there. Yeah. Which also sort of defeats the purpose here. Um, I don't know. I, I think anytime you form any sort of organized group like that, you, you have a lot of issues. Yeah. The poetry on a cracker said, dudes, y'all are in the militia. Some of you choose not to participate. That's pretty well said. Uh, let's see. Ethan says two people can keep a secret. If one of them is dead, Ken says, Sean just wants to run a cult, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> so i okay now i do not think militias are bad i don't know that i want to participate in one just because of previous experiences but you had a bad experience in a, in a militia no just the previous experiences uh, uh enlarging our circles so let me say this that if you read american insurgent by phil rabelais from the matter of facts podcast like it kind of gives you a good idea of kind of how things might be. And honestly, the, the protagonist in that book, like if he had not had people looking out and understanding what was going on and not been able to kind of join them. Uh, and by the way, Jeremy uh, listened to that audio book and loved it. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't think militias are bad. I forgot what the question was now. Uh, he, he, is it a good idea to have a uh, militia so that if something bad happens to you, uh, people can vouch for you and say if you're worth backing up or not, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 
that that is a really really tough one. Like I don't know, my militia is Aaron Savage, Jeremy and Nick. That's Heck yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a um a, a little since Sean and I live very near to each other, uh, near and dear. Um, yep. I have a a thing on my phone that I can hit that uh, starts blasting Fortunate Son at full volume from my uh, <laughs> HomePod, which is f-ing loud by yeah. the way. Um, it starts playing fortunate son. It sends Sean an emergency text. Uh, it says, welcome to the rice fields <laughs> or uh, rice patties. Uh, oh, what else does it do? I think it turns on the lamp in the uh, living room. Too. So, so mine, I have five Google homes and so mine plays. This is the end by the doors turns all my lights red 15%. Um, it sends Nick a nine one one text and it says it's go time. <laughs> so that i guess that's our militia that's our militia <laughs> We're my, the fucking... mine just screams no by when uh darth vader does it <laughs> no, no! <laughs> that'll do we like shooting.com slash dear wls for the questions we'll get get to the next ones and please submit more uh we're, we're constantly going through lots of them every single week so i think that uh, we would really appreciate it if you would do that and before we do anything else i would like to suggest that you go check out black rhino concealment uh, someone just texted me today, uh, from a company that, that we know the dude, we don't work with him or anything. We just know him and black rhino had done like a kick ass holster for him. It is very cool. They just did one for somebody, uh, from Faxon that had baby Yoda on it. Like, yeah, that was cool that was as cool. so they, they can print pretty much just about anything. As long as you hold a copyright for whatever art it happens to be, as long as it's not uh, infringing on anyone's trademark or anything. Um, they can print whatever you want on a holster. So why don't you just get in touch with them? Go to blackrhinoconcealment.com. If you need to, use coupon code WLSMOFO to save money, but they can make just about anything you want. They've got the universal mag pouches, tourniquet holsters, and holsters for just about every gun. If I called Gino tomorrow and I was like, Gino, can I get a holster for this? I would have one. So go check it out. Blackrhinoconcealment.com. We love them. We know you Black will, too. Black Wino. Not guns, not gear, just the gang. Hashtag not guns. What you got? Uh, this is going to be a tough one, guys. Oh, God, I just read it. I, my eyes went crossed. <laughs> All right, everyone here has to be someone else in the group. So who are you going to be? <laughs> Go, oh, no, that this was is, who you... This is awful. <laughs> it is awful. So someone, you have to pick one of us to be, but you can't be yourself. Holy! Yeah. What if I don't want to be anybody else? Yeah, He's dude, got, that's you, you got to pick the less the less of the evils. But there is no less evil. Like then you pick guys your all poison, suck. Nick, you guys all suck. Can I just pick death? No, <laughs> I pick death. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an option, dude. That's f-ing. none of us in this group is is death. How did you come up with this? Because this it, is the most awful question that has ever been posed to me in my entire life. Yeah. So if I had to pick. I would pick Nick because he has no responsibilities and pretty much doesn't do anything all day. That's retarded. Nick has a full-time job every day. Why, would, why would you pick a guy with a chronic Since illness? When, when yeah, did Nick get a job? I'm a terrible choice. Since before you got a job. Yeah. Really? I yeah. had no idea. He'll be acting all high and mighty. <laughs> Wait, did you right. really not have any idea? I, I didn't think it was a full-time job. Yeah. I just thought he worked like a couple hours a day. No, he gets up and <laughs> ass at yeah. dawn. I don't know what I just said. How do you make it through work without having to p*** all day? I do p*** all day. A lot. Oh, okay. And you know what? I'm still more productive than like 90% of the people I work with, so. Amazing. (laughs) Chris Dooley said Jeremy's going to be Aaron and then kill himself just to kill Aaron. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. I I think the most uh, tempting, I guess, would be Jeremy. But would I have to be like that? That yeah, you it, would have to be Jeremy you, with that you, angry with, all the with time with his personality. Yes, okay, but I thought it was like my personality, like Freaky Friday. This is not be, a Freaky Friday scenario. Oh yeah, I don't no. know. Is is it no. not? So you no. would be a passenger inside Jeremy's. Okay, f- that I was gonna say. Malkovich'd. I was gonna say if I could Freaky Friday with Jeremy, I would just hang out at the range and like play the simulator and shoot guns all day. So what Jeremy does? Yeah. Uh, so that doesn't sound too bad. Um, but. F- so if I've okay. got to live like that. I don't want, I don't want to live any of your lives. You guys, you guys all suck. Dude. Uh, oh yeah. So we cannot, we cannot influence. We just have to like witness everything. Yeah. You are in the back. You're like, right. It's like 
being in a car, but the passenger of the car. Oh, for f**k's sake! I'm uh, all dude, right. Well, that's I'm going savage that's, because there is no one that that would be like cool with. Though. No, that, that sounds like I'm going savage. Existential terror. Yeah, savage because he's a asexual, so I don't have to watch him. <laughs> um, he's non-threatening, <laughs> so it's not like I have to see him hurt any people or do anything bad to anybody. And he seems like kind of a nice guy. He is a very nice guy. Eh. Like you, you wouldn't probably wouldn't see Savage commit any atrocities. No, yeah. So I, it's I always go, the ones you suspect the least. I would go Savage because I don't want to just watch Keith Richards roll through the world. You know, I I, I just want to like I I just want to <laughs> I want to pass away in relative peace and anonymity like Savage. <laughs> Aaron, who would you be? Well, wait, who would Nick pick? I don't know. Come I don't. On, I don't like this question. There's only five of us. You could pro- four of us. No. Four to choose from. There's I, four to choose I literally from. don't want to be any of you. Dude. First of all, second of all, the idea of just being a passenger inside someone's head. Yes. Until they die, but just you can't watching. see their thoughts. You no, just have that's to f- horrible. Out the window. That that is worse than being like uh, like paralyzed in a bed, unable to communicate with the outside world. Because then at least you just stare at the ceiling. With this, you would have to like watch your awkward oh. stumble through life and do dumb and not be able to do anything about it. No. Jesus, this is the worst. Oh, I, I wouldn't pick Jeremy because I don't think I can watch someone else play video games for that long. <laughs> Dude. Not even good video games, but games on his phone. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, I wouldn't pick Nick because I'm pretty sure all you do is <laughs> and I, I just I don't know if I could watch somebody do That's that for like seven hours a day. Nick, um, Nick wants to be Sean since Sean controls Nick. Nick would finally be able to do what he wants. He'd be set free. <laughs> <laughs> Help. So it boils down to Savage or or, or Sean. Uh, I'd pick Sean over Savage. Yeah, I'd be. I, I think I'd be okay being Sean. I'm okay with that. That's just because my girlfriend's so hot and amazing. Get <laughs> you. You cannot be me. <laughs> it's too late. I'm not, I'm in the seat. I'm driving. You're not driving. You're just a passenger. I did. I, I tell you, I'm in the passenger seat. But we're in England cars, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm driving now. So Nick, who it's pick? a driver's ed car, Nick, <laughs> and I'm the instructor. Nick, you got to pick someone. Oh man, uh, I get. <sighs> Who's gonna die the soonest? Aaron. Me. Uh, can it be me? No, you cannot be you. Can I be a passenger inside my own head? <laughs> like when Malkovich goes inside Malkovich in the movie. That was weird, though, because everyone in there was Malkovich. Okay, yeah, pick somebody. But, but that will be like the shortest time period that I. So you I cannot me. be you. You cannot God pick. Damn. Okay, uh, then. I, I don't know. I guess Savage. No, sa- yeah, that sounds really sad. I don't like sad movies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't. I think Jeremy will die first. To be honest with you. Probably he might be dead now. We don't know. Yeah. He's not here. Is it, we should call in a welfare check. Yeah. You know, I was I was wondering, I was like, why don't I have a headache? And it's not, it's because I'm not hearing <laughs> all night. <laughs> no, the reason is, the, re- the reason is, <laughs> the mic is so close to my nose, I don't know how to fix that yeah. by moving my head <laughs> two inches. Give Jeremy a new mic and he's like, <laughs> or he's like this. <laughs> idiot don't tell, Whoa. <laughs> don't tell him i said that i'm about to i'm <laughs> texting him now <laughs> mr krabs mr krabs mr krabs nick pick a person i don't want to pick a person five F- this game four, i hate it <laughs> Three. i don't want to oh, play let's it let's pick a person for nick shall we yeah nick you're me you get yeah, to live my life all right now all right yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pick head. someone no i'll pick somebody i promise i'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. i'll be good it's i'll pick somebody We're moving on savage i pick savage <laughs> why uh because i feel like he wouldn't do his horrible things as everyone else that's exactly why i picked him Plus, like I said, asexual, so you never have Except, to witness. What if it turns out that Savage like kills puppies or something? Oh, mm. like Why he's not taking photos. What? If yeah, he, he's so nice, but he's got to like let it out somewhere. What if he's just like in front of his mirror, <laughs> tucked back between his legs? <laughs> he's all, Sean, would you <laughs> me? I'd <laughs> me. You're like, how did you know I'm here? <laughs> but he can't hear you. No, he wouldn't even know. I'd just be, I would literally just be screaming. For the rest of my forsa- godforsaken life. Oh, uh, what's that short? Uh, I, I have no mouth, but I must scream. Uh, I f- hate that. Is the worst not guns ever. We may never do that that topic ever again. Yeah, f- that. <laughs> yeah, that, that is some straight. You know what? In fact, I'm going home. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Uh, it is time for making news. But before we go there, I want to talk about rubber dummies. Uh, go check them talk out. Talk about them. Yeah. Uh, Aaron. Do it. Aaron. Yeah. Nick nailed the Swamp Fox read. I want you to do the same with rubber dummies. They're rubber. And they're a prosthetic human, so they're considered like a dummy. They're made from rubber. And you shoot them. That's true. They last a long time. They're super durable. They're excellent training aids. Put a hat, sunglasses, and a t-shirt on it. Pretend it's Aaron. Wow. That's kind of ruthless. Uh Uh-huh. Why would you do that? Because of that last segment. Yeah. I was fine with you till then. (laughs) I'm in your head. Now we're enemies. But yeah, rubber dummies, go check them out. They're under 200 bucks and they're going to last you. You're going to spend more than $200 on paper in the time it takes you to destroy a rubber dummy. I mean... For a lot of people, they're going to last the rest of their lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we destroy ours because we f***ing shoot a lot. Uh, so, yeah, most people, they're going to last you the rest of your life. So, under 200 bucks, use coupon code WLS, and that saves you 10% off all day, every day. Rubberdummies.com. That's the place to go. It's time for making news. What do you have for us tonight, Aaron? Nick's, got, uh, Nick's, uh, Nick's numbers are up. And not N I C K S because his numbers are down. Uh, N I C S, Knicks. So uh, they're up 19% from January and 85% jump in the Virginia alone, guys. So people in Virginia are like, what? Yep. See, that's crazy. I wish. So people clearly have money to buy guns. It's just we only buy guns when we're scared. Right? Yeah, don't be scared. Go buy a gun. Go buy a gun because you're American. Do it right now. In fact, you know what? If you buy a gun tomorrow, if you buy a gun by Valentine's Day and you Which send is- us the receipt to automated at we like shooting.com, I'll send you a free We Like Shooting patch. Nice. An, an unreleased patch. It's the wood cam with a black background. Uh, woodland camo. M81. God's plaid. And, and if you buy the gun from Sean and I, you get two patches. Yeah, exactly. I, that's kind of unethical, isn't it? Why? Nope. I feel like you're being unethical right now. Why? Nope. We're, we're promoting gun sales, which is really important to our community. Yeah, so go go buy a gun, and if you buy one by Valentine's Day and send us a picture of the receipt, we will uh, we will send you free patches. I'll tell you what. If you buy 10 guns from Sean or myself, you get a We Like Shooting uh, blanket. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. Never going to happen. Right? I, uh, Those blankets are awesome. I will only order nine guns. I, I had to do <laughs> ethics training. Yeah. When I came back from Shot Show yeah. for the second time in oh, good. like two months. Uh, yeah, but apparently they did it while I was gone. So it was just me and the head of HR. Oh, God. How comfortable was that? Uh, not. Also, I walked in and I was like, all right, I'm ready for ethnic training. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that one time I, I, I had to sit down with the HR and I, I made like some uh, – uh, joke that wasn't appropriate for the situation, and <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, don't tell HR." And the person's like, "I am HR," and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> so this is good. It's great to see Virginians buying up these guns. I think that's fantastic. Um, and Nick's checks are up 19. percent That's I think, really yeah. great. Thank you, Virginia. Now get your shit straight. And uh, honestly, like we've been down for about a year or more, so to see numbers up, it's good. Also, if you want to mail me paper checks so that we can get my check intake up 19%. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would, that next would be checks. cool. Yeah. Next. Uh, next one is Spear, which is an ammo company. They la- they launched a new ammo design for uh, carry guns, which seems kind of like there's a lot of ammo out there for carry guns, self-defense ammo. So I don't know what's the big deal about this. Hmm. Spear Gold Dot G two. I will say the the Gold Dot has uh, has been a very good uh, defensive load for for quite a while. So it looks like it gets uh, bigger pedals, five pedals. Uh, it's designed to be for optimal performance. Oh, interesting! In compact and subcompact handguns. So I'm looking at their gel test, and it looks like uh, going through bare gel and heavy clothing, they have the exact same amount of splay. Well, that's actually pretty impressive. If display is good. I don't know what the actual term for that is. Uh, what is it? I don't remember. Yeah, that's pretty f- cool, actually. Um, I'm curious about the 
this article. God damn. So it. it's sort of like uh, it's sort of like the um, Hornady bullets. So it's got a oh where did it go? Um, it's got a durable elastomer uh, in, in the hollow cavity at the nose mm-hmm. of the bullet. Yeah. Which huh. Is it CNC'd increased. like the, like the uh, no, Lehigh? No, Lehigh? It does, I don't it does think not so. look like it now. Okay. All right, cool. Well, maybe we'll grab some. There's no ballistics data in this article. There's no information. It's just a press release, basically. But all right, cool. Next, uh, next article. Uh, Sky shows off their new subcompact optics equipped pistols for under that are four hundred dollars and under. Uh, which is cool. I mean, if you want optics, I was hoping that. When I bought it, it would have like a ACOG on it, but it didn't. I don't hate Sky. It's got a Crimson Trace red dot. I don't hate Sky. I I think they're fine. I actually carried a CPX2 for a while. We have a CPX3 that I've shot a couple times in 380, and I don't hate it at all. You're just not going to sneak but, up on anyone with those. They rattle a little bit. I uh, I I'm torn on Sky. I I my experience is very limited, but uh the the most experience I have with Sky was one that was so heavily pitted in the bore from the factory mm. that it actually pull, uh, uh, broke the bullets apart before they left the barrel. Yeah. Um, so it looked like the targets were getting hit with a tiny uh, shotgun. That's actually um, awesome. No, it's really not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually super yeah. um, You shoot him in the face, you're going to take out an eye. But, like, for, I don't know. I, I wouldn't pay 400 bucks for a Sky. Um, and I'm no. not like so desperate to have an optic on my carry gun that I would be willing to go with a lower Crimson quality, Trace. uh, firearm and the optic on, on it. Like if I only have 400 bucks to, to buy a carry gun, I'd rather go buy a shield or something, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. I see me on the other hand, I'm like, I think 400 bucks seems a little high considering I think you can get a sky for two something. I assume um, that's with the red dot. Also, right? that guy holding that gun right there has literally one of the worst f-ing grips I've ever seen. He looks very uncomfortable. Uh, like even his face is uncomfortable. Graham Bates. It says the very knowledgeable Graham Bates, and the the screenshot is a picture of him with a grip like a donkey. Oh, I gotta look at the picture now. I don't like it. He's gonna come fight you. I don't give a. F-. Uh, next up, looks like Sammy accepts a new three hundred hammer cartridge. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So yeah, three hundred hammer uh, has a great name, but like. I don't know. So it's, uh, let's see. Uh, the cartridge has a max average pressure of 57,500 PSI with 125 grain bullet traveling at a velocity of 2,450 feet per second with 130 grain bullet uh, traveling at 2425. So barely any difference whatsoever. Let's uh, let me hold on one sec. I'm going to make this full screen and I'm going to share this video. And we'll just kind of take a look at it as we go here. But we can't hear it. Bill Wilson. Okay. I'm going to make a bull clean that I can back up with proven performance. The 300 hammer is the most powerful 556 five, base 30 caliber cartridge that can be fired from the AR-15 platform utilizing a standard 223 556 bolt. So what are they going after with this, Nick? Well, it it claims like 308 performance in a... 556 five, case. Yeah. With a standard AR mag, so... Introducing that's the new pretty cool to me. Hammer cartridge rifles and components from Wilson Combat. The 300 Hammer was developed for optimal terminal performance. Oh my god. Optimal terminal. Uh, bored already. So I actually I, I don't usually get excited about new cartridges. Oh shit. hold on son. They got some they got some testing here that we need to see. Getting cray cray over here. And offers nearly the same effectiveness in the field as a three in Chester. While exceeding the ballistics of the legendary 3030 Winchester. Why don't you tell people what we watched then, Sean? Hunting uh, so it's meat in front of ballistics jail, and it hits hard. The has 18% more retained velocity, wow. 40% more energy, and a 56% flatter trajectory than the three. What's the normal grain weight for a 300 blackout? Uh, anywhere from from this territory, like 130, up to like 200, 210. Okay. That's what I thought. 300 blackout at 200 yards. Field testing on over Lots of pigs. Texas feral hogs has proven that the hammer kills much more effectively than 6.8 oh. Grendel, 6.8 SPC, 762 by 39. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. They actually put a dead pig in front of a bunch of water and then shot through it again. 
Water and barrels, by the way. Yeah, water and water. barrels. Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. had water freestanding. <laughs> it's amazing. Blackout. <laughs> oh, get some. Right in the head. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like when you scratch a dog's leg. <laughs> what, the, what are they shooting through there? Pieces of wood? <laughs> yeah, what the, why do you hate orange juice? I love orange juice. Me Don't too. shoot I orange juice. That looks more like apple juice, though, doesn't it? God damn it. the hammers. That hits pretty hard. Optimized bullet weight to barrel twist ratio. Outstanding accuracy is achieved. Sub one inch groups are the norm. With 10 different bullets. Ten, 10 feet away. Tailored to any. Yeah, I was going to say, he didn't show us how far away he is. So don't just shoot your target. Hammer it. Oh, did you see that? The uh, the bullet bounced back through. Show it. Let's see. So don't just shoot your target. Goes in. Hammer it. Oh, no. He shot from the other side through a brick. Or through a bunch of wood, I see. So when you absolutely have to go through every house in the neighborhood, 300 hammer. This is an awesome marketing video first of all yeah uh second of all i'm i'm kind of into this i uh, am too yeah i hope this cartridge sticks around and proves to actually be cool uh because i i do like 308 quite a bit and the biggest issues with three uh 308 ars is that they are heavier and uh parts can sometimes be finicky trying to get them to work together so being able to throw together like a standard ar that just has a a different barrel um uh, it said it takes the uh, standard two two three bolt, right? Yeah, and I wonder how it suppresses. I mean, you could probably suppress it just fine because I don't see why you couldn't put like a two hundred and ten grain or two hundred grain whatever bullet in this and shoot it subsonic. Hmm. I don't like. I don't see why it couldn't do what a three hundred blackout can do. The question is, will it cost what Wilson Combat normally costs? Probably, and yes. will they let other people make it? Because if they won't let other people make it, I'm out. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. If they won't let other people make it, then it's worthless. Um, yeah, I mean, and this is something we could hunt with in Colorado. Yeah, in for a, sure. In a standard AR, not that there aren't other cartridges that we can hunt with, uh, 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 couldn't use in Colorado, but that is a nice option. Let me know when Faxon makes a barrel. Yeah, or just you know when ammo is available and affordable. Yeah, that too. Anyway, that'll do it. Uh, let's wrap this thing up. Love WLS is a place you can go. You can find our store where you can buy Aaron's hoodie. Uh, my hat, Nick, are you wearing what? WLS? No, oh, I'm just pointing at things you're talking about. Or so. Nick's Cantina shirt. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Um, that's where you can your, do your that. Your shirt too, Sean, right? Yeah. Uh, no, this is cult only. Oh. Bah, bah, bah. And you have to join that at the gun cult. Oh. com. Isn't this cult only? This is uh, the no, Cantina shirt. No, it's just Cantina. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so yeah, uh, go check that out. Uh, Rooftop Rewards Program, Gun Cult, and the, the most important part is saving you money. Um, we've been getting a lot of messages lately from people saving a ton of money by using our sponsors, and I think that's awesome. Uh, so if you go there, love WLS, you can find a link to our sponsors, their coupon codes, links to their websites, and all that good stuff. And honestly, we appreciate it when you go there and click through, because uh, then they know that we sent you, and uh, that's fantastic. So go check that out, love WLS.com and theguncult.com. That's fantastic. Join a gun-related advocacy group such as Second Amendment Foundation, Firearms Policy Coalition, Gunners of America, and uh, get involved. Whether you're joining a militia, whether you're starting a militia, whether you're just uh, being a lone wolf, whatever you want to do, just stand up for your freedoms. These are individual rights, and we have to fight for them as individuals. If we don't, then just, I don't know, we're going to lose. That's all there is to it. The NRA is not powerful because they're smart, because they're excellent lobbyists, because of any of that stuff. The NRA is powerful because... 5,000 members, or I'm sorry, 5 million members. That's why. Because they have 5 million members. And with all the gun owners in this country, like just imagine if we were all banded together in an organization, how much power that would have. So get involved as individuals, get involved uh, with groups, organizations, think locally. Very, very important. We saw a lot of this in Virginia. Arizona's in some trouble right now. It's a, it's a crazy time. Crazy time in our country. I talked to, uh, I had lunch with three of my friends who are not, um, in the gun industry or anything, they're IT guys. And I was like, yeah, it's crazy, right? Like how much anti-gun there is right now with all the presidential election and everything coming up. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, all this <laughs> anti-gun stuff. It's crazy, right? Like it's all you see. And they're like, oh, I haven't seen anything actually. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, I haven't seen anything. So don't forget, sometimes we live in an echo chamber and we see the things that 
Uh, and I was like dead concerned. I was like, all of them are platforming or campaigning on a platform of, of no guns. And none of them had seen any of that. They're all, no, it's pretty much healthcare and economy. So don't get too wrapped up in our own little small uh, gun world. Definitely try to see that bigger picture. I thought it was a, a really good moment for me to, to remember things and to make sure that I'm kind of seeing things from all points of view. And when you do that, make smart decisions, get involved. And we always give out the suicide prevention line, 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK, or you can text the number 741-741. We're here live every week, Mondays and Wednesdays, on demand every day. Go to we like. Go to we like shooting.com slash show to subscribe. I don't know what I was about to say, but it was not good. <laughs> and as we always say, thanks for listening. Get some medical training and meh. 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 Yeah. Uh, I, I have some disappointing news, guys. What? Uh, the Truth About Guns has a 300 hammer review from September 12, 2018. So I don't think the cartridge is really taking off. Aaron, did you find old news? No, it just got Sammy spec. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Is, is the review well, bad? I guess. Uh, oh, I haven't even read it yet. I just saw the date. I, I guess maybe uh, maybe that'll help then if it just got Sammy spec. I, I didn't even notice the spelling until just now. It's H yeah. A M apostrophe R. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pun. It's very punny. It's a pun. Yeah, ham like pig. Oh, Hammer. got it. I didn't even get it until you explained it. Um, name of the show, uh, name of the show, asexual or savage. Just say savage. No, we've already named a show savage. Oh yeah. I don't want to be any of you. You all suck. Don't want to be. Any- okay, we'll figure that out. Bye guys. Bye. 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 I said bye first. I said bye last. I said bye last. Did you think that show was worth a dollar? Help the cast by visiting lovewls.com.